Hi, my name is Leanne Demush, and I'm the Water Resource Specialist here at New Mexico State University. I'm also the State Coordinator for the program Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network, which we use the word or the acronym COCORAS. Um, what we're going to be doing is, is putting on a series of training videos. There's four videos. This is the first of those videos. We'll be doing um, in this video an introduction on the COCORAS program. Our second video will be teaching you how to collect and measure precipitation, rain especially. The third video we will be talking about how to collect and measure hail. And the fourth video we will be talking about how to collect and measure snow. During the fourth video we will show you how to receive a free rain gauge just exactly like this one that holds and measures 11 inches of rain. So let's go ahead and get started. I uh, briefly want to tell you, um, give you an introduction of the COCORAS program. Um, the COCORAS program is a very unique, nonprofit, uh, community based network of volunteers of all ages coming together and measuring and mapping precipitation. Precipitation meaning hail, snow, and rain using a, a low cost measurement tool, just like this rain gauge. This rain gauge cost about $28, and in the New Mexico program here, we have a grant, it's from USDA, it's called Efficient Irrigation for Water Conservation, that helps, give, helps us give out free rain gauges while we have them. And so, if you would like to become an observer, you will receive a free rain gauge just like this one. We also use an interactive website that we uh, helps you put in your data and once you put in your data you can go into the mapping program and find um, find your where your location is is and where how much your precipitation was for that day but you'll also be able to look at what your uh, how much your neighbors got how much other people in your city received in rain and also how people out in your county or in other counties in New Mexico, how much rain they received that exact same day. Um, we're not going to, this video series, we're not going to be going over the interactive website, but we do encourage you to go visit the website and play around with the maps, play around with the data, get to know the website. And we also encourage you to go on the state website and bring down our PowerPoint presentation that will give you a more in-depth uh, training session on how to measure and collect snow, rain, and hail, but also will give you a more in-depth learning or training session on how to enter in data in their interactive website. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> the first thing, things that you will need before you can participate is we will need an application. Now if you'd like to join Kokoros and you are not able to get on the internet, you don't have access to internet, you can contact us and we can send you a written um, a volunteer application form and you can fill this out and join Kokoros. We can also you can also go online and fill out an online application on our website which is www dot c o c o r a h s dot org. Now we'll give you this um, this website um, address off and on during this video series. Um, we also need your location. If you live in uh, within the city, um, pretty much your um, address will give us a location on the map of where you're located. But if you live in the more rural areas, um, if you've got your longitude or latitude coordinates of where you're going to locate your rain gauge, or if you can give us some type of nearest street markers or county road, something like that that can identify you on a map, that would be greatly appreciated. We also encourage you on your application to list your telephone number and your email address because if we're not able to find you on the map, it gives us a way of contacting you and getting additional information from you. Um, we also need your commitment. We ask for a one-year commitment, but the longer the commitment you can give us, the better. Um, we've had this program here now in, in um, New Mexico since March of 2005 and several of our observers are still very active in the program. 
And so we appreciate that long commitment to us. We also need your willingness to receive our emails. Sometimes, because Coke Ross is sort of a funny name, some of our emails will go into either your junk mail account or go into your spam. And we recommend that if you've applied or put in an application to us and you haven't heard from us in several days, that you maybe go in and check your junk mail or your spam account and unblock our emails so you can receive emails from us. Now, things that you will need before you can participate. Well, the first thing is, is you need a desire to study and learn about storms. You'll also need a training packet. <coughs> this is our training packet, and it's filled with all kinds of information, and it gives some also some very basic training tools in here that can help you. Um, and it also has all of our contact information in this training packet. You'll also need a unique station name and number. And once we get you located on the map and you've applied, you will receive an email from us with this unique station name and unique station number. You'll also receive an additional email from us that will give you an ID name and your password. These two items will allow you to log in to your Kokoros account on the interactive website. Um, and you'll also need the equipment. Um, like I said, right now we're giving out free rain gauges, so you will receive a rain gauge exactly like this one. And we'll also send you a hail pad or two. And they look just like this. It's a very sturdy type of styrofoam that's covered in a heavy duty foil. And we'll talk a little bit more about these hail pads later. Okay, we also, you also need to have access to the internet or a, a telephone. Now, if you don't have access to the internet and you're not going to be able to enter in your data on the internet, we don't, wanna, we don't want to have that keep you from being an observer. We have several observers that do not have access to the internet and we can talk to you about how to get your data to us either through the mail or through calling us once a month and giving us your observations for the month before. Um, so let's talk about setting up the equipment, okay? The most important thing is location. That's always the key to great data. And so you want to avoid putting your rain gauges in places such as um, under the sprinklers. You want to keep uh, your rain gauge and your hull pad away from animals. You don't want to put your rain gauge on a, sleet, a steep slope. Um, you also don't want to put your rain gauge under your porch or your patio. Uh, don't put it on top of your house. You don't want to put it underneath trees. You want to avoid, in other words, all obstacles. What you want in your rain gauge is an accurate catch. So you want to keep it from items or keep it from obstacles that will um, that will either put more rain or more water into your rain gauge or decrease your catch, okay? Now, we also have um, a rule of thumb on where to place your rain gauge. Um, if you live in a developed area, we, you strive to be as far from that obstacle as you are high. So, for example, if you, in your backyard, you have a tree that's 15 feet tall, you want your low, uh, rain gauge to be located 15 feet away from that tree. If you live in an open area, you want to strive to be twice as far from that obstacle. So for example, let's use that same 15 foot tree, you want your rain gauge to be about 30 feet away from that tree. Now of course, there's no ideal place. Okay, so like for instance, if you in, in your backyard, you have two trees and they're sort of far away from each other, the ideal place would be to have your rain gauge between those two trees. Um, let's talk about the rule of thumb for height, okay? If you're in an open area, then you want to have the top of your rain gauge from to the ground to be exactly two feet in measurement. So from the, from the bottom of the ground to the top of your rain gauge, you want this to be two feet. That's in an open area. Now if you live in a developed area, then from the ground to the top of your rain gauge, you want to be about five feet, okay? 
You also, when you're mounting your rain gauge, you want this to be level. So you might want to take a really small level and just measure it and make sure that it's pretty close to being level. You also, now you'll see on this rain gauge, we've put it on a 4x4. Four four. You also want to have the other side of your rain gauge, and you'll get with your rain gauge a, a bracket like this that you can just slips, your rain gauge slips into it. You'll want to mount it, and then you'll want to bevel the other side. The reason for this is, is because if you don't bevel it, it's going to be straight across. And then sometimes a really rather heavy rain, it could hit the top of this piece of wood and bounce into your rain gauge. And what we want, always strive for, is a good catch, or a catchment as we call it. So you want to bevel this. Now, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a 4x4 four four like this. I mean, this is sort of what we encourage people to do, but you can also use some type of metal post and you can put your bracket, attach it with some plastic tie wraps and attach it like that and then put your rain gauge on it. Okay? So this concludes our first video for the Kokoros observers. Um, our second video will be talking about how to measure and collect rain. Um, and like I said, what we would really like for you to do is to go through all four of these videos before you join our um, Cocross Observer Network. We thank you for joining us and we'll see you in video number two. Thank you.